Check one. We're back. <laughs> nice to see y'all. Welcome, Welcome, David. Um, Blake, are we uh, are ready on Zoom land? Yeah, we're all good to go on Zoom. I'm going to get this mic. So I guess Wayne. Yeah, she's working. From home. Yes, we're all good on Zoom land here. If we get somebody to maybe do a quick test on Zoom, I can someone on Zoom attest that they can hear us. All right. Thank you so much, Stacy. Appreciate it. All right. Um, I will now call the meeting of the Denver City Council to order on January 5th, 2023. We could all rise to the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ready for roll? Ready for roll call, Mayor Byrne? Uh, yes, thank you, Wendy. Council Member Clarino. Here. Council Member Deutsch. Here. Council Member Keisler. Here. Council Member Lucchese. Here. Mayor Bryan. Present. All right. Uh, tonight we have no special presentations or announcements, um, so we're going to move into our general public comment for this evening. Um, this is the time for any member of the public to come and address the council, um, not individuals, but the council as a whole, preferably, on items relating to the city that are not specifically addressed in the agenda uh, later. So that is to say anything generally um, or anything that's on our consent agenda, which today is the check registry uh, from December 3rd through December 30th and the 2023 report of waste discharge. Uh, so if anyone has anything to comment on the consent agenda or generally, please either come to the podium or if you're in Zoom, raise your hand. I'll deal with the room participants first. Uh, please state your name and address for the record. You'll be allotted three minutes. Our finance director, Blake Michelson, will give you a 30 second warning when you're close to the end. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Tim Holt, 6235 Hill Street. Three years ago, the city council took the bold step of passing an abandoned and distressed real property ordinance. Model on one adopted by Weed, an ordinance which essentially said that the city of Dunsmuir was going to play an active role in encouraging property owners to fix up their buildings so that they are rentable or leasable. <coughs> to that end, the ordinance requires, quote, the owner of any abandoned or distressed commercial property to provide access to the city to conduct an exterior and interior inspection of the building to determine compliance with the municipal code, unquote. My understanding is that after three years, there are at least two downtown commercial properties where the city has not been able to carry out the required inspections due to resistance in some form or other from the property owners. Uh, the owners of the former law office that's been vacant for decades and the California theater. I know there are some who say that this city and this council will not be able to enforce its own ordinance, thereby sending the wrong message both to these two property owners and to those property owners who maintain their properties in good condition, but have seen their property values depressed by poorly maintained properties nearby. Personally, I'm taking a wait and see attitude. We have at least one new council member now who may be able to help us move things in a forward direction. So there may be some hope for the future. Stay tuned. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Mr. Holt. Anyone else in the room would like to make public comment, please? Uh, come to the podium. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, Peter Arth, and members of the public. Uh, Peter Arth, 5859 Sacramento Avenue. Uh, I had the good fortune <clears throat> last month on the 17th to attend a housing workshop 
held by the Dunsmuir Planning Commission with the support of a consultant group. And I was the only member of the public there. There were no members of the city council there, but it was an excellent hour long workshop devoted to the housing element in Dunsmuir's general plan and how is Dunsmuir gonna provide affordable housing. And my takeaway, what we all know is you're not gonna find a new subdivision at Dunsmuir. There's very few buildable lots. If you build a house, nobody could afford it. But the, what we did find out is there's over 300 vacant residential units in the city of Dunsmuir, over 300. And that's sort of to support what Tim is saying, the low hanging fruit. So as you organize yourself for 2023, I hope whoever you choose as mayor and vice mayor will work closely with the planning commission, the president or the chairman, Craig Kay, uh, council member, Chrissy Phil Moore, who is one of the historic district delegates to actually set goals. There's people that can't afford to live here that want to live here. There's the service industry, whether you're a renter or an owner, and the workshop gives you the demographics by age, by income, by housing stock, if the city can actually work together excuse me, to deal with affordable housing and provide it for citizens that will be a notable achievement for this council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arthur. Thank you. Right, I see no further. Okay, one more public comment from the room. David Hicks, 5630 Dunsmuir Avenue. Hi, Mr. Kenny, very nice to see you. And Mr. Reef, I'd like to say hello to you for the first time. Hi, nice to meet you. Um, this is just to alert the council of the safety issue. Sorry, could you state your name and address? I did. Oh. David. Sorry. <laughs> and I also wore my ski pants. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to mention that the sidewalk in front of my property, which is owned by the city, um, had a new piece of sidewalk put in, uh, I don't know, five years ago or something. And they didn't uh, tie the new sidewalk to the old sidewalk, which would have been appropriate. And so uh, the tree roots have lifted up the, the sidewalk about that much. And so I, I've seen people stumble on it. I hope no one falls. And uh, uh, Brian Wilson did a fine job one time of coming out and replacing part of that with some stones, or what do you call this? Stepping stone things, the sand. And I, some more of that is needed. And so I just thought I'd ask Mr. Reef if he might take a look at it on some non rainy day. All right. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. All right. Any further public comments in the room? Yeah. Please come to the podium. My name is Karen Keisler, and I would prefer not to say where I reside. First. That's optional. You may proceed. Okay. Um, I am standing to offer my public input regarding the, the reorganization of leadership of the coming year. As you're aware of the events that unfolded last year between myself and Dave Keisler, I was hoping it would remain out of the spotlight at the public in the public. It became a toxic shaming game led by Vice Mayor Bruce Deutsch, who took it upon himself to redeem and renew Dave's image using his title and inf influence, which I believe is not to the, pub to the public's best interest and not business of the city of Dunsmuir. I am asking two items to be considered during this, this item of business. Both Dave Kaiser and Bruce Deutsch not to be, not be considered as candidates for the mayor. Excuse me. Mayoral. Um, the mayoral candidates will be considered later. Okay. Um, so with this specific public comment, you're welcome to stay around. We will be addressing that issue later. Okay. But if you have any item that doesn't specifically address 
um, who should serve as mayor or vice mayor. Uh, now's the time to talk about that. Now is time? No, uh, for mayor and vice mayor, we're considering that later in the agenda. Right, in four, six For weeks. anything that's generally related to the city, not specific to that topic, mm -hmm. you should make a public comment now. So if you had a comment on oh. items not on the agenda, this is the time for that. This is, this is oh, on okay. the agenda. Okay, so I have my statement that I'd like to read. Um, is it is it about the mayoral appointments? Is it? Um, please. Yes, it is. Okay, so okay. then I would recommend you wait. You wait till the mayor and vice mayor topic. Uh, okay. It should be coming up here. It'll be a uh, new business um, item. 11B. 11B, thank you. Oh, then I can. Then yeah, you can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, it's just we have a order and things on the agenda. Oh, okay. And I would also remind um, all counselors we're not going to respond specifically to public comment as it is also not on the agenda. Um, so if anyone else has any general public comments for this evening, um, please come up to the podium. And if there's nobody else in the room, I'll turn to Zoom. Please raise your hand if you'd like to make a public comment. Uh, seeing none, I will close general public comment for this evening. We'll move forward to staff and council comments. Uh, I'd like to start with um, our city manager. Uh, Mayor and council and public, uh, thank you for the attendance. It's the largest attendance since I've been here. So, you know, I know it's not for myself, but I appreciate it. Um, so uh, over the last uh, last month, I guess, it's, yeah, it's been approximately a month since we had our last meeting. We've had a, um, a lot of uh, challenges, uh, most recently today and yesterday uh, regarding uh, stormwater. Um, so if you see any stormwater plug ups or anything like that, the guys have been out all day and it's been, it's been tough. And I thank Brian and, and Ben and all the other guys for handling that. But uh, we, we need to make sure that we're able to get the stormwater drains clear. So if you see any issues, please, uh, please let us know. Um, Snow removal, we've had some challenges with parking and those kind of things. Um, please, please, please move your vehicles during snow events. Um, it, they're just talking that we may have uh, elevation changes in the snow. So depending on how far down those come, it could get uh, pretty nasty. Um, and then also uh, wastewater plant. Today we have uh, gone back to the river for the first time in uh, almost three years. So um, we are taking in an excess amount of water um, through INI issues for wastewater. And so uh, we have gone back to the river as of today at about 12.50 PM. And then uh, as far as that, that's most of what I have. The question I had is, is this something that has happened in the past where we've had this and it just hasn't happened in three or four years. So we have a process and everything involved with it. For the, for the wastewater? Yeah. Yes, so um, we have not uh, had, uh, obviously with the drought, we haven't had as much rain in the capacity. And so um, I went down there with Blake today and we were taking in uh, basically right around a million gallons a day. And we had been averaging around 150 to 200,000. And so we were just using our ponds and they would evaporate off and we haven't had any issues, but that's what the plant's designed for is designed to go to the river um, when the flows are high enough and they are now high enough. And so we are uh, outputting about as much as we're taking in as fast as we can treat it. So. Okay, thank you for that report. You know, it was an important issue when we raised the rates in the sewage planet. Yeah, large... and there's still many improvements to, to come yeah, because- spent a lot of money to get to where we are now. Yeah, for sure. And uh, that's, that's some of the planning stuff that we have in the process is to help with that I and I because we shouldn't be taking in more water on the days it rains. I mean, the idea is to only take in sewage, but uh, obviously there's a ran, uh, groundwater issue. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's uh, part of our challenges we're dealing with right now. Okay, cool. Any additional questions for city manager? Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Justin. Police Chief Sergeant Ortiz. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, New Year's Eve uh, was busy in town. Fortunately, we only had uh, two arrests. Uh, for misdemeanor public intoxication. Uh, other than that, the restaurants and businesses were thriving and it seemed like there's a lot of people out having a good time. Uh, other than that, I have nothing to report. All right, thank you so much. Thank you for keeping our streets safe. Any questions of Sergeant Ortiz? 
Uh, Blake, do you have anything? Staff comments? Uh, we must proceed to Councilman comments. Councilman Kaiser. Um, yeah, uh, first thing I'd like to say is on uh, oh, kudos to Brian and his crew. Yeah. Those guys have been doing an outstanding job. Today I seen him, he looked like a soaking wet rat. He just, and he'd been in there cleaning the sewers and stuff. So kudos to his crew. And you're right, they've been they've been doing a really good job. So um, we all know that the hardware store sold and Ron's retirement party is at Pops on the 14th from five to seven. The doors are open at 4.30. It costs 15 bucks in advance and tickets go on sale tomorrow at the hardware store. It's 20 bucks at the door. It's gonna be really good food by our own lunchbox diners dinners and in a, a no host bar. So everybody cordially invites you to come out and say thank you to Ron for, I don't know, he's been here very, very, very long time, my understanding. So uh, I appreciate him. And uh, I guess that's about all I got. All right. Thank you, Councilman Kaiser. Councilman Pony. Um, this is my first regular meeting, so I'd like to just say I'm excited to be here uh, representing the community. Uh, it's, as everyone knows, it's raining really hard. We've been going through a lot of weather, very different than anything we've experienced the last couple of years. Um, I haven't seen anything like this in four or five years. Um, it's going to keep raining, so we need to be very cautious. Um, I'll be flooding down on South First Street. And yeah, I'm just like happy to be here. Welcome to the party. <laughs> Councilman Carno, Councilman Deutsch. Uh, yes, I have a little statement to read here. I want to apologize to the people of Dunsmere for the inappropriate interaction I had on Facebook recently. My interactions on Facebook began as my honoring a promise to a dear friend to right a wrong and ended up making everything worse. I learned there are wrongs that can't be made right. So to the people of Dunsmere, and especially those who voted for me in 16 and 20, I'm very sorry, and I apologize. With that said, and with the new year ahead, I want all the citizens of Dunsmere to know that I am more to Sherman than ever to give my all to make Dunsmere even better. I have four endeavors that I want to be focusing on. First of all, uh, last year, the council submitted to the local transportation commission a document calling for the creation of an entirely new county bus system that meet all of the needs of the people of Dunsmere in the county. I am one of the six commissioners on the LTC with three members coming from the Board of Supervisors and three city council members. I have been a commissioner for four years and I'm scheduled to rotate into the position of vice chair for the commission. I look forward to using that position to make the dream of a new bus system for the county in Dunsmere a reality. I'm also a member of the League of California Sacramento division. On one hand, I was just elected treasurer of that division on the other, I'm beginning to initi an initiative in conjunction with the governor's office to explore a new way of funneling grant money to rural cities. Closer to home, I will continue the effort I began when I first got to the council to bring the airport back to life. We now have a brand new runway paid for with a $3 million no match grant. Next is to find the best use of the 70 plus acreage to the east of the airport. Building Dunsmere's future was a project that I was trying to kick off the ground um, it was based on an effort by Aetna called Building Aetna's Future, and that was an effort where they brought together after months of preparation all the citizens of the town to kind of get together and figure out what they wanted for the city. Um, that was part of an effort that I wanted to get involved with in 2020, but then COVID came along. The following year, I tried to COVID, uh, spare it down to make it a, 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 a volunteer effort. So. Um, what I'm looking forward to now is reaching back out to the Cisco Revitalization Network, the Ford Family Institute, and trying to come up with, by the end of April, a Building Dunsmere's Future event based on what they did in Etna. And I was there for it. It was really beautiful. Finally, um, I want to find a way to create a hybrid form of newspaper. I definitely recognize the lack of any newspaper to get word out to all various people. I want to try and use my technological abilities to find a way to get it in whatever form that individual, that citizen could use, et cetera. So those are the goals I have looking forward. And as I said, I apologize for my uh, mistakes on Facebook. Thank you, Councilman Deutsch. Thank you. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, I wanna uh, kind of reiterate some of the points um, 
it's very hard not to say council member Arth, um, but mm -hmm. member of the public Arth um, brought up a really good point. So the city of Dunsmuir is in its cycle six housing element, which is the main long-term guiding document for housing in the city of Dunsmuir. And uh, that is ongoing right now. There is an open survey for getting people's input on what they believe are the housing issues in the city of Dunsmuir. And so uh, I really strongly suggest everyone look at our website is available in both English and in Spanish. Um, also, if you need help finding that, um, you can feel free to email me. I am gonna try and work with, uh, I had sent Wendy an email with, I believe Dustin CC'd about working on putting together advertisements for that to try and get as many uh, participants as possible. The contractor Plan West has prepared uh, the Wairika housing element, but they've also are preparing the uh, Mount Shasta, Etna, Doris, Tule Lake elements as well as ours. And I kind of want to beat them in the number of people who take our survey because I'm competitive and I want that. And I wanna hear from you and what your opinion is on housing in the city of Dunsmuir. <coughs> Uh, the other thing too that I'm working on is there's a meeting for the library at 11 a.m. this Saturday, and they're going to be discussing uh, future library services. This is something I attended their board meeting um, a while ago, and this kind of got put on the back burner, um, just discussing the future of the library, what kind of services it should be offered, and looking for uh, grants to support the services and possibly the um, upkeep of the building that they're in. Um, you know, because it is a city owned building and working through those processes. The other thing too, is to bring up uh, with the sidewalk comment is we also are conducting a transportation study right now. And we have contractors from uh, Civic Well. Um, they used to be the, um, uh, a different nonprofit that worked with the state, but Civic Well is assisting us with the transportation study. And we did do a walkthrough workshop with just the advisory group. Um, prior to the holidays and prior to all the snow and rain. Um, so it was a lot nicer than it would be now, but we are gonna be putting out information for public input on transportation uh, related issues in the city, which can include transit, active transportation, which is biking, walking, scooting, rolling, things like that. And so I hope everyone stays tuned for that and participates in our transportation study. And as I said before, also takes the housing survey, which is available on our city website in both English and in Spanish. So thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Casey. It's also in the chat. Ah, oh, thank you. The housing survey is in the chat. You should take it now. Yeah, take it right now. Right now. We should provide paper uh, copies at every council meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. I, uh, my understanding is we have to beat 294. Only wow. 294 people in Mount Chasta took the survey, and we can we can beat that. We can beat that. I've got, I've got 295 like that. There you go. We can do that. All right. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, happy New Year. Um, similar to Councilman Keisler, I'm very excited um, about the transfer of the Dunsmuir Hardware Store. It's been in business since the 1880s. I had the opportunity to meet um, Jake, uh, one of the new principal owners. Um, he did seem open to coming to council to introduce himself. Uh, perhaps uh, our town historian can give us an account of the hardware store through the decades uh, when <laughs> the time comes. But I encourage everyone to support Ron on the 14th. Um, some exciting news, I had the opportunity to have a sit down with the principal owner of the Travelers Hotel and discuss their project. And I'm helping them try to secure financing to get this up and running. And it may be hopeful, but they could potentially complete this project uh, in two years time. Uh, you know, We'll see how it goes, but there's definitely a big push on their end um, to look at this and, and cross the finish line. Uh, I know we've been waiting for a very, very long time, but um, I have hope we'll have good news on that front in the next six months. Question on that? Yeah. Um, have they given you an idea of, is it still the funding they're looking for? Is that still the hold up or is there something um, else involved? Well, I'm not gonna discuss their affairs, but um, you know, it's, it's putting the whole package together to be able to move forward okay. at a quick pace. Got it, um, thanks. Is, is the case, but happy to fill you in more. Yeah, I understand. Uh, given their permission. So. Yep. All right. um, so let's move into the uh, committee reports. Uh, being the holidays, I would not find it amiss if committees did not generally 
I will dispense of that item. Well, I, I do have one thing I, I was realizing while we were talking about the rain, and that is that um, if you remember a, a couple of months ago, based on the DPAC request, there was information that went out on flooding, and it might be useful to let people on social media know to go back if they still have it or to put it out again. And then also in terms of bringing this up as a committee, I'm wondering if the DPAC might want to find if there's any way they would like to, I'm understanding you'd like, you're on the committee as it is, maybe we can find out if they want to get involved in anything helping the city with their, what they've learned over the time is that reasonable um well one thing i'm not on DPAC anymore unfortunately oh. i couldn't be on DPAC oh, with right. being on city council yeah but i'm in complete support of okay that i'll, I'll reach out to them out. Yeah. mr mayor yeah. on that note i want to take advantage of that we we have sandbags available for people correct yeah i forgot about that about it yeah where, where yep. are they at we, I mean, uh, we need to be waking people up right now to what's right. going on. Yes. A lot of them. So anyway, I appreciate sorry. the input. Um, if you could announce the sandbags, but yep. then let's proceed with the meeting. We have DPAC on later in the agenda, as you guys noticed. So we'll discuss that committee there. Um, um, yes, yeah, so we did. I forgot about that. That was mentioned to me in the flurry of busyness this afternoon. But uh, we do have sandbags available for all the public uh, down at the public works building. And they're welcome to uh, go and get them as they need them. Oh, cool. Thank you. We'll Thank you, Brian, for getting that done. So proceeding uh, to item seven, approval of the minutes. I make a motion to approve the minutes of December 15th, 2022. Second. Uh, I'd make a note that the date is incorrect. It should be the seventh. Seventh, right? Seventh, yeah. Seventh. Should That's be December 7th. Yeah. December 7th? Seventh, not 15th. Yeah. I thought it was the eighth. Okay. Or eighth? I think it's the eighth. I'll make a motion as amended. All right. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion at hand? Right. Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Against, aye. motion carries. All right, um, let's move into the consent agenda for this evening. Uh, item A, we have check registry from December 3rd through December 30th. We have the 2023 report of waste discharge. It's a report we submitted to the state. I make a motion to adopt the consent agenda. Second. Right, motion to second. Any discussion of the motion at hand? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thanks. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Uh, it turns out the date is the eighth. So okay. we probably uh, let the record reflect. Let the record eight. reflect. Yeah. Thank you. Get to that. Um, we have no public hearing tonight. So this moves us into our old business from the last meeting. Uh, Councilwoman Lucas was gracious enough to introduce at that time the electric vehicle charging stations amendment to Title 15. And contract planner Rico Tinsman requested that I close her out too. All right. So on page uh, 16 of the city council agenda packet is the staff report from, uh, as I said before, Rico Tinsman, who's our contract planner who prepared this. So this is the second reading of ordinance 574 adding chapter 15.56 electric vehicle charging stations to title 15 buildings and construction of the Dunsmere municipal code to create an expedited streamlined permitting process for electric vehicle charging stations. And the project also includes the adoption of a electric vehicle charging station checklist pursuant to assembly bill 1236 and ordinance 574. So this is coming to the city council for a second time. It was reviewed at our last meeting. And what this is, is it's codifying in our local municipal code an expedited review of electric vehicle charging stations based off of new state law. So new state law is requiring that cities adopt a process to process charging station building permits within a 30 day time window. Um, if you do not have uh, adopted processes in place, that window goes down from 30 days down to, I believe, only five or six days. Um, and so uh, to ensure that these are being put in and designed properly as to not cause electrical fires or any other issues with the building itself, um, we have adopted the 30 or we are proposing to adopt the 30 day review period and not the five. Um, so how that works is if someone were to bring in a building permit tomorrow and they want to put in an electric vehicle charging station in their home, we would have only five days to review that because this law went into effect at the beginning of this calendar year. Um, that's a very, very quick turnaround for us to do plan check and make sure that it's being designed and engineered um, to a level that is safe. And so the suggested motions are on page 17, beginning with number one. And uh, I'll just kind of open it up for comments from here. Or questions, questions. and comments. Questions 
Um, if I could, um, I'd like to add one other thing here because it just came up here, and that is that uh, Charles Anderson, who's the person from League of California Cities, reached out to me because I have a Tesla and said, we have a opening for a, a conference for rural cities electric charging stations, and they wanted to know if we might be interested or somebody here in the region might be interested in hosting that. So I just want to put that on agenda. Maybe we can look at that later, but it does tie into the EV world there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, do we have any charging stations that we'd have hard to <laughs> Well, Actually, we have a couple we, over we, we by yet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, any additional questions or comments from council? Seeing none, I will open this up for public comment. Uh, please come up to the podium and as before, state your name. You'll be allowed three minutes. Uh, still Peter Arth. <laughs> <laughs> and it's my great hope uh, when. Bryce Craig was mayor of the city of Dunsmuir. Uh, Bryce and I worked closely to try to get Tesla to put a charging station in Dunsmuir. And in the end, because we had no support from our local utility, we lost out to the city of Mount Shasta. But I hope the city of Dunsmuir treats this as an opportunity. If you look five years out, I-5 is going to be the electric highway. That's the aspirations of the state of California to be an international leader in electric vehicles. As council member Deutsch talks about upgrading local transportation, it could be electric buses. That's what I it planned. could be smaller vehicles, but it's only gonna happen if Dunsmuir starts planning for the future for parking areas, convenient charging stations, it's a huge opportunity as we rebuild our economy, but it's only going to happen if you all in the Planning Commission take the initiative. There's more money out there than you can imagine if you take the initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Art. Any additional public comment? If you're on Zoom, please hit the raise your hand button if you'd like to make a comment on the electric uh, charging station ordinance amendment. See, now I'll close this public hearing for tonight. Proceed with the uh, discussion. Uh, I would just like to quickly add, I did not read through the environmental recommendation, but um, the proposed amendments are eligible for a general rule exemption, which is sex, section 15061B3 of the uh, CEQA guidelines. And so this would be exempt from environmental review under the California Environmental Quality Act. Got a motion to examine. I'm ready. Well, you want to move it? I'm ready if you don't. I figured I'd let Mr. Tesla take it. <laughs> <laughs> I move that we adopt ordinance 574, an ordinance of the city council, the city of Dunsmuir, adding chapter 15.56, electric vehicle charging stations to the title 15 buildings and constructions of the new Dunsmuir Municipal Code, and that we read the ordinance by title only. Second. All right, a motion and a second. Any further discussion of the motion? Right, seeing none. Um, can we do a roll call vote? Ordinance amendment. Councilmember Clarno? Aye. Councilmember Keisler? Aye. Councilmember Deutsch? Aye. Councilmember Lucchese? Aye. aye. And Mayor Bryan? Also an aye. Thank you. And motion then, carries. And then I'll make the additional motion to adopt resolution 2023 01, adopting the electric vehicle charging station checklist. Go for a moment. I second. I'll second. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, if we do an additional roll call vote, or just one roll call, or? Either one. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Against? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. And so just to let everyone know that ordinance will be uh, ratified and will take effect in 30 days. Okay. All right, um, our next item on the agenda and new business, item 11A, DPAC summary and informational update. Um, we were given a very thorough memo. Um, is there a member of the DPAC committee present here? I didn't see somebody. Um, well, I know Linda was unable to make it tonight, but she sends Mike, her apologies. Mike is here. Michael, would you like to? Well, I wasn't at as after I haven't been at the last meeting since I was no longer a member of DPAC, so I think it's probably okay. the I can, I guess I can kind of summarize the, the, the memo. At least for the public's benefit, yes. Yes. 
So over the over the past year, um, DPAC has met monthly via Zoom has had 11 meetings uh, in 2022. They have uh, provided public education through seven uh, DPAC newsletters. Um, they worked with Council Member Deutsch and uh, to promote DPAC member to develop and promote the recruitment of those members. Um, they partnered with the Fire Safe Council of uh, Siskiyou County to uh, successfully provide fuels mitigation and wildfire prevention activities for Dunsmere. Um, they released, received a large four-year uh, Dunsmere fuels mitigation project from Cal Fire. They worked uh, with CORE to uh, harden 45 homes, uh, promoted uh, zone haven and wildfire education. They provided home hardening and defensible space training in Dunsmere. Um, they have also collaborated on Fire Friday educational events and initiated a FireWise community activities and planning. Um, they also developed Stop the Bleed awareness campaign, uh, trading, training and advocacy for Dunsmere, Mount Shasta and the region. Um, this provided vulnerability assessments for Dunsmere, Mount Shasta schools and developed the trainings uh, to be completed uh, this January. Um, they also provided uh, flood risk and flood preparation uh, National Flood Insurance and Zone Haven Code Red, code red Emergency Information to the residents that was mailed out in October. Um, they continue to research potential uh, audible emergency warning systems, and they assisted with the city's green waste drop-off program. Um, they do have a, a number of uh, recommendations for staff and council to continue on. Um, unfortunately, as a part of this uh, memorandum, uh, three of the members are... Um, their term is up this March uh, 7th, and uh, they are not seeking reappointment. So we are looking for recruitments uh, to fill those positions. Um, they um, would uh, like to request the city assist with the Stop the Bleed purchasing for trauma kits for city and support staff uh, to participate in trainings. Um, and they ask that we continue to seek grants and resources for hazard mitigation and uh, for staff and activities and collaborate on the Dunsmere Fuels Mitigation Project and continue to support the efforts um, to become a FireWise community. Um, having worked with them now for about a year, uh, when, you, when you hear this, this long, long, long list of things they've done, it's just amazing that this tiny group of people have been able to do all this. And every time one of those members leaves, it's a real loss because each one has contributed so much. So I just think we all as a council should thank them um, for everything they're doing to help keep us safe. Yeah, I think uh, I definitely would move to recognize their service in future meetings. Are we're, they we're, asking for funding for these stop and lead kits? Or? They that, did. We approved it. Uh, okay. I thought we got to. Yeah, 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 I don't remember. If I don't remember if we. You were I think it was prior to your arrival. Before me, but. Uh, but if not, we will. Yeah, if not, I will. Uh, I'll look into that yeah, to yeah. be sure. I think it was in July. We okay. Supportive of that. Okay. We're also finding, trying to find other partners to work with in terms of the school, the library, for the stop of lead case yeah. as well. And my understanding is the uh, members who are stepping down would like to address the council before they mm. step down. They were not able to make it tonight. So. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, the PAC committee know that uh, this was received by council. Are you uh, going to be doing any public comment or other discussion? Informational received. Okay. But, um, I think just for the members of the general public, one of the really nice things is um, they're requesting that we go for additional grants. And I think we should be hearing back um, next week if we're funded through the California Office of Emergency Services, also known as Cal OES. Um, we applied for their Cycle 2 Jumpstart grant to hire a full-time hazard mitigation and disaster planning coordinator for the city. Um, we went through only one round of edits, which right. other cities went through several. Um, so I'm really hopeful that the city of Dunsmere will get that position funded. Uh, it's a no-match grant, and that person would be with us full-time for five years. And so that would be paid through through the program. And the um, explicit purpose of that program is for them to apply for additional grant dollars, as well as do awareness campaigns, work on our green waste programs, and then provide a full-time staff report, support to the Disaster Planning Advisory Committee. And I did just receive an additional, uh, basically a notice of funding uh, for uh, from CAL FIRE. They're now um, accepting grants through the, I believe the end of March for up to $5 million dollars to include uh, up to th three quarters of a million dollars towards equipment type activities uh, to help with, uh, uh, you know, urban wildland interface and, and uh, the vegetation mitigation component of 
you know, a lot of the work that DPAC has already done, now they're starting to put a lot more money towards that. So mm -hmm. I, I expect to uh, be uh, participating in that grant process. There yeah. is another possibility that could uh, come into the puzzle here too. And that is, I think CORE is still open to the idea of exploring whether they might want to come back and spend more time with us. And, uh, you know, that would be a, a major uh, uh, upbeat for us. And uh, so I'm hoping that comes through. Yeah, and I, they made a big difference. I would say if anyone's considering uh, this committee, uh, reach out to some of the some, reach out to the city. I'm sure there's members on the committee or former members who'd be happy to go over what they do. Um, the heavy lifting's been done, and so far as the committee is, you know, a strong institution in this town, and you get to continue the good work. And there's no public qualifications. Right. For I people will open it like public to... comment. This looks okay. like someone would like to make it. Yeah, I've, uh, uh, Brian Wilson. Uh, 4411 Olive Street, Dunsmuir. Uh, I've got the had the opportunity to work with DPAC, and uh, and it was they were an amazing group who's done a lot to help that a lot of you guys don't see, and I get the the real opportunity to see they they supply members for green waste. Uh, they go door to door and, and make that event really happen. Um, they they I mean a lot of the stuff you've seen around town with fire clearance has been done through grants that them and the fire safe council have done over the past. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, just, I just want to say thank you to them. All right. Thank you so much, thank Mr. You. Wilson. If there's any additional public comments, uh, please either come to the podium. If you're on Zoom, raise your hand. Seeing none, I will close public comment on this item. And we'll proceed to new business item B, Council Reorganization, Selection of Mayor and Vice Mayor. I will begin by explaining the procedure that we will take tonight for the mayor and vice mayor. We will start with mayor nominations and then do vice mayor separately. Uh, any member of the council may nominate another. The person being nominated may second the nominations if they so choose. Once all the nominations are in, I will allow each nominee to give a brief statement as to why they would like to be mayor in the coming year. We will then open to public comment after each nominee has had their time. We will close both public comment and open council discussion on the mayor appointment. If there's no further discussion on the mayoral appointment, then we will vote on the nominations in the order in which they are made until a majority vote is made. Uh, after the mayor, we will move on to the vice mayor and follow the same process for nominations, statements, public comments, uh, voting. Are there any questions? All right. Then uh, after that, I would like to say it has been my uh, profound honor to serve uh, this council and the city of Dunsmuir in the role of mayor. Um, it's been a, uh, a long, um, productive two years. We've had COVID. We've had four city managers. Um, but I'm very happy with where we are today. Uh, very grateful for Blake Michelson's effort in getting us through that time period of interim city managers. And very grateful for Dustin Reeve for taking a chance and moving his family across the country and, and joining us. Um, uh, it's been a real pleasure. And um, I think we can open up. Yes. I nominate Juliana Lucchese. I'll second. What? I'll second. Second. And I'll uh, no, not, so. uh, and I'll nominate uh, Mayor Bryan to serve an additional term. I'll second. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. Um, let us consider any additional nominations. Make a brief statement. Sure. Um, thank you um, for the nomination. I, I appreciate it. Um, I was very excited to serve for two terms um, or serve two years um, with my first election to the city council. Um, one of the things I really want to focus on this year, and I've kind of thematically made this year for myself, um, a year for radical joy. Um, that's kind of the theme. And I think one of the things that really struck me with the reelection process was one of the questions that was asked of us is, you know, about Dunsmuir's history and legacy. And I really want to explore that a lot more. I want to explore our residents that we have within the city. Uh, one of the things I would really like to focus on is just as much as we have Black History Month, Hispanic History Month, I'd like to really recognize those individuals in our community. I don't think we do enough to celebrate each other as well as our history that's good, but also talking about some of the history that's not. Um, especially with the presence of the railroad um, here. And it's really brought to mind a lot of things 
Um, in this past year, if you're not aware, they're doing a, a historic cleanup on the rail yard right now of, you know, what is it, over 100 years of contamination that's occurred by the railroad into that area. I think we have a really great um, opportunity to work with the railroad on the Mossbury Falls project. Um, we've also just recently become part of the Sierra Nevada Conservancy. And so a lot of those grants for recreation, natural resources are open to us that we have not had those opportunities in the past. And I'd like to really focus on that piece. Um, but also just again, supporting our city staff and getting everything done. We have very limited budget. We have very limited staff um, and kind of moving forward with that piece. And then also just again, getting more advertisement out, encouraging public comment um, of our residents and really working on that piece. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm very honored uh, by the nomination as well. Uh, kind of going where I left off, um, I had a lot of intentions when I imagined uh, serving the community as mayor, um, my own unique style and what I do in that time. And we were in the middle of COVID and then city manager and you, you end up you know, playing the hand you're dealt, so to speak. Um, I've always intended and I would love to actually achieve this more so in the coming year if I serve as mayor to take a, a more um, engaged and more hands-on approach to education and to city policy development on the city council. Um, we've been making decisions in my time here, long before that, on all sorts of matters that we don't necessarily get the most clear understanding of. I know our unique backgrounds can give us some take on that, but I, I do find it sad that I've never toured the wastewater uh, plant as an example. And I think it'd be really healthy for that to be a standard in council, even if we don't do it every year, but I'd like to um, lead the way um, that way. I would also like to do what we can to honor our citizens and achieve the low-hanging fruits. You know, we talked about it in public comment, it was mentioned for housing. Um, I very much want to see our vacant units brought back online. Um, and I know the city council will work on that, whether I'm mayor or not, but I, I would love to achieve that. I'm happy to work with everyone going into the future, wherever I sit. So this is new. How do we sort this part out now with two uh, nominations? Oh no, it's normal enough. Um, I think the well now open I'll, to public now we'll open comment. this up to public comment. So is this public comment on these two nominations? Yep. It would be on yeah yep. on the nominations. Yes. Or generally on the topic of reorganization for title of mayor. There'll yeah, be another. If somebody's not been nominated for mayor. This public comment can't be about a nomination for somebody no, not nominated for mayor. Is what I'm saying. I will say it's on the topic we advertise on the agenda. So, Mayor. All right. Hi, Karen again. So, I'm here um, to talk about um, Bruce Deutsch's um, post on uh, political forum, as well as Neighborhood Watch, but that post was taken down. And then a few days later, Bruce actually. Please, fine. Yes. Please, Jim. Don't want to ask you again. <clears throat> um, the Dunsmore Neighborhood Watch actually took his post down because it wasn't a political post and said it, it, it was supposed to be on political form. Um, I'd like to read a little bit um, about that post. As long as it relates to the title, uh, um, to the office of mayor. Okay. So yeah, I think oh. that, 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 it's a little confusing because there was an open time issue, but at the open time issue, you were talking about uh, mm -hmm. you want to discuss the appointment or possible appointment of uh, Councilmember Deutsch to the mayor. What we're discussing now is one or two motions, neither of them affect Councilmember Deutsch. Okay. So um, the, I, I would like to go further. Um, and ask that both Dave and Bruce not be considered as candidates for any committee. Assignment. Well, why don't why don't we do this? We have two. What we're dealing with okay. now is motions before the I city just, council. If one of those motions come up, then that would be the appropriate time oh, to discuss okay. that. I did not realize there was one for the city council members. Pardon me. I did not realize there was going to be another one for just city. Well, council. right now we're talking that there's the, yes. the motions deal with the mayor. Okay. And neither of them refer to Council Member Deutsch. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Karen. All right. Uh, if there's any additional public comment, please uh, come to the podium. Or if you're on Zoom, raise your hand and we'll uh, be with you shortly. Still Peter Arth. <clears throat> it was my great joy to serve the past four years 
with the Dunsmuir City Council. And while Matthew and Juliana and I did not run together formally, we ran together in spirit to try to change this community. And you could see smart, dedicated, well-educated citizens stepping up to occupy the shoes and the seats of those who came before us all the way back to the beginning of the city of Dunsmuir. I know from the hours I've spent with them, it, it was very, it was an act of necessity to offload our response to the wildfires, not to the city council and its staff because the city didn't have any staff. So we did the DPAC and Julian and I wrote the charter for the DPAC. We helped attract citizens and they are praiseworthy, but going forward, either the city of Dunsmuir is going to step up, realize the opportunities that it has to be the vibrant city it could be to connect the dots or not. So I'm immensely pleased with the two nominations. I am very bullish on the future of the city for the next four years under the leadership of whomever is chosen. The expectation of everybody in this room is you're gonna to work together and knock the ball out of the park. And either you will or you won't, but you certainly have the good wishes of the community, the hopes of the merchant community and our fragile economy that this is our time. COVID is under control. We're having a beautiful winter. The ski park is open and we need funds. We need vision. We need planning. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Art. Anyone would like to make additional public comments? Member of the public art. You did it too. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's a really bad habit. To so, uh, record David, be corrected. Uh, David Hicks. Uh, I'm a licensed attorney and by the city of Dunsmuir to practice here, but that's ending. I'm just retiring after 50 years in practice. John, just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> um, while our House of Representatives has completed an unsuccessful 11th vote for election I, of a Speaker of the House, I sit here thinking how lucky we are to have two people nominated, either one of which would win on the first ballot, probably. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. All right, any additional public comment, please come to the podium. If you're out there on Zoom, uh, go to the reactions tab and hit the raise your hand button. All right, uh, seeing none, I will close public comment and we can proceed uh, with council discussion. And all the vote, everything to say. I think regardless of just letting everyone know from members of the public, you know, we have a very lovely council, um, you know, regardless of who gets elected or anything, we still are here for everyone um, who needs any help with anything or has any projects. And so please feel free to come forward to any of us. It doesn't matter. You don't need to talk to the mayor, um, whoever it is. Um, just continue to please stay with us um, as we move forward. Okay. I, I can just say um, on my end, um, I'd be honored to have Juliana be mayor, and uh, it has been a real honor in the last two years. So, no further discussion, I'll call the questions. All right, uh, if we do a roll call vote on nominee Juliana Lucchese for the term of mayor in the coming year. Council Member Clarno? Aye. Council Member Deutsch? Aye. Council Member Keisler? Aye. Council Member Lucchese? I will abstain because I feel weird voting for myself. <laughs> I do, it's really awkward, so I will abstain. Uh, it's my great pleasure to vote aye for Mr. Kiss. Congratulations, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. I think it's Mrs. Mayor. Oh, that's right, Mrs. Adam. Mayor, we passed it over there. I'd like to nominate uh, Matthew Bryan as vice mayor. I'll second that. All right, there's a motion and a second. Are there any other nominations? Well, I'd like to nominate um, Councilman Clarna. All right, and I'll second that motion. And so we'll now open it up. Any other uh, nominations?
Seeing none, uh, we'll move into statements, uh, beginning with Council Member Bryan. Okay. Um, so as Vice Mayor, uh, it would be my great honor uh, to serve as Vice Mayor at the pleasure of City Council. Um, I will work hard to serve the good of Duns Mayor and my constituents, our constituents. Um, however, I, I do feel as if, um, if Councilman Clarendo can experience running a meeting or two, it may prep him in his eventual road to pulling the gavel on a more permanent basis. So I would be in favor of young blood coming in and experience. All right, Council Member Clarendo. Well, I'm just getting used to being a council member, but I guess I could take the uh, take the leap up, um, be vice mayor, be a wonderful experience, and further serve the community and on these meetings every once in a while, have a little bit more involvement in the community. All right. Seeing no other statements, I'll now open this up for public comment on the nominations for vice mayor. Seeing none, we'll now move into discussion or a vote. Is there any other discussion at the item at hand? Call the vote. All right. We'll begin with the nomination of Council Member Bryan to Vice Mayor. Uh, Wendy, could you please do a roll call vote for us, please? Council Member Kaiser. No. Council Member Deutsch. Yes. Council Member Clarno. Yes. Council member Lucchese. I'll vote yes. And so that is a, a majority. And so uh, Vice Mayor stands as Vice Mayor Claire no now. So you will uh, basically to let everyone know, uh, we don't get paid anything. We don't get paid more. Uh, basically, I just get to run the meetings. And if I'm not here, Vice Mayor Claire no can run the meeting in my set. So thank you everyone for the, yeah. You'll be fine, it'll be fine. <laughs> Thank you everyone uh, for that item. And we will now move into our other item of the day, which I believe is 11C, which is city committee appointments. And I'll hand it over to the city manager to introduce the item. And please be nice to me. It's been a while since I've had to run a meeting and I'm having to remember everything going on. That's okay. So we have a, a number of uh, committee assignments um, and I, I will uh, just, uh, do you want me to like go through the whole list and then we start back at the top um, uh, for those assignments they are on page 37 of the packet um, these uh, the first of these committees is the finance committee um, it has uh, two council members uh, on that committee uh, we sure. and then we have uh, the DPAC or the Disaster Planning and Advisory Committee. So City Manager Reef, why don't we just take them each uh, individually at a time. So we'll, sure. we'll introduce right. the Finance Committee. Uh, part Council of order on the Finance Committee. Um, its charter originally stated uh, two councilors with two year terms. Um, I wasn't here and no one remembered at the time. And both, both members are um, expiring their two year terms. Of course they could reapply, but I, I would think it helpful if we alternate the council terms on finance again as originally intended. Um, that being said, I'd be happy to serve on the finance committee again, especially as I uh, will not have to spend as much attention running meetings. And I would not like to be on finance. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Michael. Well, then I move that uh, Councilman Clarno join me on the finance committee. I second that. Committee. Well, so we, we have to take public comment. So uh, I believe well, that- Well, can we go through them and then get, take public instead of doing it for each one or not? I would like to do it for each one because let, I think- let me, let, let me interrupt here. <laughs> Normally, it's the role of the mayor uh, to uh, make appointments. The, the city council as a group can change that. I mean, they can, if they disagree with one of the appointments, but th that's just an internal function of the, uh, of the city council so that, uh, well, public can comment on it, but I mean, it's a, really a total function of the, of the city council. So. Okay. I had the opportunity uh, to read the protocols. Our protocol state it's mayoral appointment with full council ratification. So uh, majority council ratification. Majority. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to go through. And so we are on finance. And so there is interest from uh, council member Brian. And then is it safe to say vice mayor Clarno that you're also interested? Yes. And in the interest of alternating, I'll take the one year term. Okay. 
So what I'll do is we'll take them each as we go through and then I'll open public comment on the item as a whole and then we can then close into discussion and voting on the appointments and so I'll just kind of keep track of what people are interested in at this time. So we'll move into the disaster planning advisory committee was actually changed to a standing committee so there is no need to assign uh, those positions at this time. Uh, those will be open. Well, uh, I'm, I don't see my name on here. So would I still continue on as the DPAC representative? So yeah, you could continue to attend the meetings on behalf of the city council, but you would be a non-voting member. Oh, of course, liaison. It's always that way. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I would be here, right? Liaison. Okay. Well, yeah. we'll add that to the list. Yeah, exactly. All right. And so then we move into the solid waste committee. There are two um, council members assigned, myself is assigned, and then a previous council member, Arth, was on. So we are looking for one council member interested in solid waste. I would hey, like why to- Why don't you try that? I would like to talk about trash. I love <laughs> trash. Um, are there any interests in solid waste? Uh, I will. Okay. Any other interests in solid waste? Okay, cool. Um, the next ones are the airport ad, uh, the airport advisory ad hoc committee is uh, council member Deutsch and myself, uh, council member Deutsch, would you like to continue? Yes. And I'd like you to still be the chair. If you okay. Would. Thank you. And anyone else interested airports? Interested, but not in that committee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the next ones I think are, are more of the, uh, fight ones, uh, if anyone would like to have fun with those. Uh, they're really, uh, there's a, there is an assignment to the League of Local Agencies, which is typically the mayor yeah, um, so that goes to the low, yeah, Lola. Yeah. Um, and then we have the Siskiyou County Solid Waste Joint Powers Authority, which actually, if you remember, we assigned the primary representative to our city manager, Reef, uh, at the last meeting with myself as an alternate. Um, that has to be done through council action for that group. Um, we have our Dunsmuir Recreation and Parks District, which is a separate process similar to DPAC. I'd like, I'd like to bring something up there, though, because I know you particularly, Madam Mayor, have been concerned about that board and the actions there. What I would like to do is, and I know this from before, that, that Dave has been a real big sponsor of the pool and everything else. I'd like to appoint him as a liaison there to start building a better line of communication. So normally I would accept that. Unfortunately, the Parks District meets on the same exact nights oh, that, at the same exact means, time as our meetings here. That is, that is something I wanted to bring up to the councils if we would uh, consider maybe doing a joint meeting with them maybe That's twice a, a year. Idea. Correct. Um, yeah. To kind of help, yeah. to kind of help do that communication if possible. And, if, uh, you and I know you've been time, in communication but, um, with them too. This, this um, summer uh, we gave them homework to come back to the meet. We had a joint meeting. They owe us another joint meeting to go over how they're going to rectify some of the deficiencies in their lease. Well, I noticed Katie O'Grady is on the line, is up on the line and she's with that. But I do think that even if they could change to a different date or something, if we could find a way to get the council really working together with them, mm -hmm. I think we could go a long way. So I'd like okay. to look at that down the line. Yeah, so, and yeah, another well, thing that was mentioned. Um, so back to the item at hand, it's just committee assignments yeah. for council members. So we will bring this back at a future agenda. Thank you. Uh, CDBG Loan Committee, and for those who do not know, the CDBG stands for Community Development Block Grant, which is a federal program administered through the California Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, and this is a loan committee that helps small businesses. Uh, it's a very low interest loan, if not no interest loan sometimes, depending on that. Um, these are two citizen members. Uh, I believe we used to assign council members on this, but we have since removed them due to a potential conflict of interest because the council approves all of the final loan appropriations. So I think we're okay on CDBG loan committee. Um, we'll have to confirm with our citizen members um, if they are still interested in that. Um, our next one is the IRWIM, which is the Integrated Regional Water Management Group. Uh, they have a, a group for the Upper Sacramento River that meets on a, a fairly frequent basis. And I believe uh, we have previously assigned our representative to be the city manager and or uh, the finance director. So Blake has been going to those. Um, that one, uh, we did have a council member previously on, that was council member Arth, uh, and then we removed him for staff because these meetings tend to be from nine in the morning until like two in the afternoon. Uh, so it's easier for staff members to spend that amount of time with the Irwin group. Um, is there any potential changes in that? Or are you okay with the current staff assignment to Irwin? I'm okay. Okay, I see no issues here. 
Uh, the Collier Interpretive and Information Center. Uh, I was the last person on there, so I could speak to that. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, basically, the Collier is information, uh, Interpretive and Information Center is located just uh, north of Wairika on I-5, and um, it was created as part of a, uh, uh, what's, what's it called, uh, the type of- Welcome. No, no, it's a welcoming center, but it's a type of a, where the all it's of It's a joint JPS. powers. Yeah, exactly. So the point is, is that there is a representative from each of the cities. And basically what we do is we try to make sure that as people come into the county, um, they get to hear about Dunsmere and things going on in Dunsmere. Um, I was part of it and I, I was overvoted at one point. I just didn't feel like there was a whole lot that I was contributing, you know, being this far south. Um, and uh, then Mark Rowley took over for a while and then he had some problems and had to stop. Uh, so it's up in the air whether or not we want to continue with this and whether we want to send somebody up there. So we, yeah, go ahead. And it doesn't have to be decided tonight, but I just think it might be something out there to continue to look at, and particularly in coordination with the chamber, because it, it used to be Richard Dindris that went before I did, so mm -hmm. it could be a chamber member. But for right now, we don't have anybody. So it is, uh, and I was going to say it is important for us to send a representative because we contribute dollars yeah, to exactly. this, and, yeah. and so we should probably have a representative on this board. So that is open so, at this time. Is there? Do do you want? Uh, I mean. From a staff standpoint, we could put something out and ask for applications if there's interest from the council to do that yeah. and see if there's anybody in the community. I'll also the talk to the chamber as well. Chamber as well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I was, I was going to pull it back to the council as a whole. Is there any interest from a particular council member to serve on this committee, or would we like to go back out for a general member of the public and or a staff member? Names, probably. I ain't got time for that. Yeah. And you have to go all the way up to the Collier Center, which is um, <laughs> practically Oregon. Well, yeah. a lot of it's in Wairika, but it's Wairika. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm good. We appreciate your time serving on it, but I, I yeah. can't. Okay, so we, we will discuss at a future uh, okay. meeting how we want to handle that in terms of advertisement. I just want to make sure everyone's okay on that. So, and then that brings us to our next one, which is actually should be an ad hoc committee, which is the public safety committee, which is a, a group, uh, two council members who meet quarterly, ideally with the sheriff's office to discuss the contract and provide input on oversight of the execution of that contract. Uh, right now it is myself and it's council member too. Brian. I'm happy staying on that. I'm very happy staying on it. Uh, we have Important work ahead of us on that committee. Yeah, I okay. I believe it's important as we move into that because it was only a one year MOU. Extension. So yeah, um, I believe that's an important Just committee. One point of clarification: I, that date is definitely not correct. Oh, the July first, twenty twenty two. Yes. Uh, so oh, that, that was a previous MOU. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Good catch, though. <laughs> yeah, do good. All right. So, uh, seeing no other issues, uh, we'll keep the current assignment. Uh, the Airport Land Use Committee is a county committee dedicated to maintaining land use surrounding all of the airports, not just Dunsmere's. Yeah. I am the current representative, and we have never met. <laughs> um, so, I'll just keep doing that um, if you guys work. really want to. Um, that brings us into our unresolved. Madam Mayor. Before okay. I go further, um, that brings up a point. Um, shouldn't I be on there for the LTC as a representative? Because that's a county organization as well. Oh, we did forget about the LTC. Yeah. Um, would you like to continue serving? I assume you would like to. Well, certainly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I'm on LAFCO, but I, I don't know if that's in. That's the Lola group that appoints yeah. those ones. I think okay. we appointed you. We did, yeah. 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 Um, so the LTC, is there any other interest? Or it looks like Councilmember Deutsch is going to get that one. Thank you. For which work. is the Local yeah. Transit Commission. Uh, I'm trying really hard not to talk about acronyms. Um, so the unresolved committees that are open for discussion at this point are the Economic Development slash Tourism Committees. Uh, we do not have a charge um, or consistent meeting schedule for this committee. And not so Councilmember Deutsch and Councilmember Brian are assigned to those. And so I'll open it up to the two current members to kind of open that item well, uh, you know for me we did meet um i think twice uh in the course of the last four years um i think the the final conclusion uh, i feel on this committee is the, the work of economic development is very very important to dunsmere um, we have the economic development planning grant coming up we will be meeting and discussing it but anything important has always kind of come straight to council and yet another committee uh, hasn't served it. So I, I do think that if, as part of the process in our economic development planning, we want a specific committee that is not the full council, uh, happy to serve, but I would move, we remove this committee until the specific need arises. If Mr. Uh, I'd be fine. Deutsch has no objections. Yeah, I'd love that. I'd like to work with you on that because you know we worked together on this uh, 
uh, broadband thing, and I think I'd like to continue working with you. So whenever we decide to bring it back up, that'd be great. Okay, Thanks. so at this time, we'll remove that committee. The next is the Chamber of Commerce liaison. Um, this is Council Member Deutsch. Would you like to continue in that position, or well, is that something you'd like to kind of rework? Well, I, I've, I've uh, got kind of two different ways of looking at it. On one hand, I'd like to continue, but there's another side of me that thinks that somebody like Michael might be a good person to come in, especially with the DNA he has. I know that your father was one of the key members of that for a long time, so I think that <laughs> might be good. Mr. Brewfest, that's a perfect <laughs> <laughs> With the Brewfest and also, um, I know Matthew and I, or Councilman Brian and I, have talked um, a little bit about trying to get an Oktoberfest going as well. So I would be interested in potentially. Okay, so I'd, I'd be willing to pass on the liaison okay. of the chamber to him and I think they'd be glad to have him. Thank you, Michael. All right, thank All right. you. Uh, next is the Neighborhood Watch, which I believe Councilmember Deutsch and Keisler were very influential in when it first began. And I believe because of COVID and a couple of other things, we kind of put this one on the back burner. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to say, just to kind of put it in perspective, uh, I spent about three or four years coming into the council chambers here mm -hmm. once a week with whoever was the sergeant at the time. Uh, ben spent a lot of time with me in here during Neighborhood Watches. And, and it seemed to me at the end of that, before COVID came on, that we're just so... Uh, much of Swiss cheese as far as a community, it really is gonna take more in an effort than just having meetings. So that's one of the reasons I wanna do this building Dunn's Mirrors because I thought that would be a great time to introduce some of that information to people. So for the time being, um, if somebody wants to take it on, I'm fine, but I'll kind of hold it in my back pocket for a while if that's what you prefer. Okay, um, well, we can go with your um, recommendation. We can just keep it on as uh, just kind of a floater with economic development. Maybe we'll do a charter when it comes time to do that. I know okay. one of the things too is the DPAC committee because it's kind of taken over some of the role and purpose of that neighborhood watch as well. So maybe there's um, something that we can do there. So, uh, and then everything else is concluded. So our short-term rental ad hoc committee is concluded as well as our water and sewer rate study. So just to go back over committee appointments at this point, right now we have a recommendation for finance committee for council member Brian to serve a one-year term, council member, uh, vice mayor Clarno to serve a two-year term, uh, council member Deutsch to be a DPAC representative or follow those meetings and report back to us there. Uh, the airport ad hoc committee would be council member Deutsch and myself. The local solid waste, you miss solid waste. Solid waste. Add Dave. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so yeah, I'm, yeah. Sorry, solid waste would be Councilmember Keisler and myself, but also we do have the airport ad hoc yeah, committee, yeah. which is you and I. That's next area. Um, the local transportation commission representative for Dunsmere would be Councilmember Deutsch. The Collier Interpretive Center is open, and we would go out for a public representative and advertise. Public safety would be Council Member Brian and myself, and the Chamber of Commerce liaison would be Vice Mayor Claire now. Does that sound correct? Okay. So I will now open this item up for public comment. If there are members of the public who would want to comment on committee appointments, um, as well as the committees themselves, they may feel free to do so. You will have three minutes, and I believe Blake has our timer up here. And uh, again, uh, please state your name when you come to the podium. Karen Geisler. I am standing to offer my public input regarding the, the reorganization of leadership of the coming year. As you are aware of the events that unfolded last year between myself and Dave Kaiser, I was hoping it would remain out of the spotlight of the public. However, it became a toxic shaming game led by Vice Mayor Bruce Deutsch, who took it upon himself to redeem and renew Dave's image using his title for influence, which I believe is not in the pub in the public best interest and not the biz not the business city of Dunsmere. I met. I'm asking that both Dave and Bruce not be considered as candidates for any assignments. I know of, I know both of these considerations have large Im impact impacts for the workload in the council, but will be easily tasked to carry out. That is why I suggest revisiting the topic in four to, four to six months, depending on their behavior. And the council is most importantly, the city's needs. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Are there any other comments? 
Madam Mayor and Member Peter Art, uh, I have two. One is with regard to the Airport Advisory Ad Hoc Committee. <clears throat> if you look at the purpose of that committee, it says to consider and review all activities of Mott Airport, including the feasibility of municipal solar farm or public slash private partnerships of same new business park. And for the last four years I served on the council, all it was ever about was private aircraft and a runway and FAA grants. Uh, our auditor has pointed out, we know that the airport is an enterprise fund is not a big money maker for the citizens of Dunsphere. So when in the world is this committee ever going to start to look at the potential for making that property that we inherited from the county more useful and profitable as we move into the electric world and the electric economy? I hope the charter actually is effectuated starting next month. My other comment is it's absolutely counterintuitive to shut down a committee on economic development and tourism. I mean, it wouldn't make sense to anybody that's governing a small city in Siskiyou County. <clears throat> but if that's your decision, okay. What I would suggest is you start an ad hoc committee on affordable housing and that the ad hoc committee have two members of the city council two members of the planning commission. You meet once a month with the city manager and the city planner, and you start to talk about both the vacant housing problem and hand in hand, the future of the historic district. If Ron McLeod was able to stand here, he would repeat his testimony from 2014 that the historic district has suffered under the current arrangement of two members of the planning commission being designated as historic district representatives. They have no power, they have no mandate, nor does the planning commission. And as a consequence, when you walk down Dunsmuir Avenue through the historic district, you see what you see. 30 seconds. Why wouldn't you make that better? So if you wanna ditch economic development, tourism, go ahead. But I would ask you to make an equal or greater effort around the future of the historic districts. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Are there any other public comments on committee assignments or committees? And uh, members of the public on Zoom may go to the reactions tab and raise their hand if they would like to also make a comment at this time. Mm -hmm. All right, seeing none, I'm gonna close public comment and go into discussion. I do wanna follow up, I like that idea. So I'd like to explore that if anybody else does. Okay. Um, so again, uh, we have talked about this previously with committees. Uh, pre when we first got on about four years ago, we had like 13 committees, yeah. uh, none of which had uh, meeting schedules or uh, mission statements or anything like that. So I, I would strongly suggest using the templates that we have to make sure that we, when we create a committee, very clear what the purpose of that committee is and what the membership would look like. So I encourage any council members who are interested in a topic area and would like to uh, create that committee to, to use that as a template and we can schedule it at a future agenda item. We have an expert in creating these charters and you, don't we? We're, we're getting there. <laughs> uh, anyway, are there any other comments or questions on the committee assignments? Otherwise, I will transfer this list over to the clerk and we will um, circulate this so everyone can take a look at it. Okay. It didn't look like we had any. So I will now close this item. So that will conclude our new business for the evening. Sorry, I have the agenda on here. And that'll move us into item number 12, which is future agenda items. Future agenda items are topics brought to the city council for review and or action. All dates refer to the first introductions and can be altered as time and priority levels are there. Uh, council member Keisler. Yeah, I really like what Peter was saying and concur with Bruce about the ad hoc housing, um, housing ad hoc. Uh, I'd like to bring that back and talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also like to talk about maybe 
I'd also like to talk about snow removal on Siskiyou Avenue and the policy. There are no polls, there are no signs posted. So again, for future agenda items, they're not up for discussion, okay, but I we can request. Point. I'd like to bring that back to, uh, and I'd like to have Paul Ruder there from PACE if possible, ask some questions. For you. All right, so uh, per our protocols, council members do need a second to place items on the agenda. And so council member Deutsch has basically seconded the housing ad hoc. Um, is there a second for a discussion at a future agenda uh, as on a future meeting agenda for snow removal policies. I would second that with just the simple idea that we live in a, a community where we're always looking south, wanting to bring in all kinds of new people south of the city. And those people don't have sidewalks. They have things just like Siskiyou Avenue. And, and so uh, the whole point is, is that we so need again, to- So again, it's if you're seconding, you can just say second, but we're gonna, second, we're, yeah. we're gonna save discussion for a future meeting. Thank I just you. Be clear, it's not like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I second that. All right, are there any other future agenda items? No? Madam Mayor? Yes. Um, I guess for, for one, I was brought to my attention by a chance meeting that um, Mossbray is entering kind of a new phase. Um, and you clarified some of my questions. Uh, based on that chance encounter, but um, I think it would be wise for the council to maybe reconvene how we want to formally address council involvement in the, the trail, um, particularly if real estate negotiations are involved. I'd love to be given the charter to maybe help with that. Who do we have working Mossbury right now? Uh, Juliana. Yep. Could Dave but, join them on that? Uh, so again, we're not up for discussion, but I'll second that. We have been talking about the Mossbury Falls project um, and what's going on with that. So we can bring an update at a future agenda meeting. Madam Mayor, I forgot something. Okay. Um, it seems to me that uh, we used to rotate on the agenda. This week, this week would be this council member and, and the city manager, and next week would be another. Mm -hmm. you know, For the pre agenda meetings. Yeah, correct. I'd like to get back. To, I think that's in the protocols. So I'd like correct. to get back to that because. It hasn't been that way in quite some time. Yes, it's been a little bit. So we'll put that on. That's not really a future agenda item for discussion. Uh, my understanding too is we have some uh, city council protocol updates, uh, speaking with council member Brian about that. And so we will bring council member protocols at a future agenda. Um, are there any other future agenda items from the council members? So I'm gonna open up, I will be requesting two council items for the next meeting. And again, there is no discussion on the items at this time. And I understand that this may be a little bit um, controversial, um, but I've prepared two memos and two proposed resolutions for censure of council member Keisler and council member Deutsch concerning activities with city staff and fellow council members. And so I'll be placing that on the next agenda. I will send the memos and the proposed resolutions after this meeting to the city manager uh, so he can disseminate that ahead of time. Uh, that, those will be the items that I'll be presenting at the next meeting on the item. Um, and so just to understand that I, I have prepared those for the next so meeting. What sort of defense will be allowed? You can submit whatever you would like for it, um, okay. as long as it's, again, uh, pertaining to the item. Okay. So you can address it as fully as you'd like and provide any supplemental materials to city staff for the agenda. So cool. are there any questions? I would second that. All right, seeing none, uh, we'll move into adjournment. All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? We are adjourned. Our next meeting uh, will be in two you know, weeks. We were gonna try and get together. Okay. Our next meeting date.